Is this the best behind the scenes setup money can buy? I think it is. And in today's video, I'm gonna explain why I got it and why I think you should too. So good to be seen and it's even better to see what's going on. Welcome back to another video. In case we're meeting for the first time, my name is Francis and I am a destination wedding photographer based out of sunny San Juan, Puerto Rico. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about this setup I've got going on and also provide you with the reasons I invested in it. First things first, this is a GoPro Hero 9 mounted on a native mount, which is then mounted on a small rig ball head. These are all also mounted to an L bracket, which is attached to the bottom of my Canon R6. Links to all of this setup will be down in the description in case I incentivize you to pick it up for yourself. The first thing I want to tackle is the benefits and why I got this. So truth be told, I saw fellow wedding photographer Taylor Jackson come up with this craziness behind the scenes on his channel, and he was actually the one who brought it to my attention. I've always liked the idea of having a second shooter at all of my events, but that's not always going to be possible. Now, this setup allows me to do three things. Provide the client with behind the scenes footage of their event, record the day's festivities for my personal use, as well as number three, use the recordings for videos like these where I like to discuss gear and reviews. I think it makes for great YouTube content. The sorcery within this setup is that you can go from landscape to portrait mode and the horizon will remain the same. It's honestly kind of fun to see your lens go from the bottom of the screen to the right and having everything else stay intact. This of course is something that you can achieve doing two things, installing the max lens mod right here on a GoPro Hero 9, 10 or 11, as well as locking the horizon lock on your GoPro. I'll take the opportunity to provide my own settings right now so that you can pause the video and jot these down for yourself. I'd like to tell you about the benefits of having this setup. Firstly, hiring a second shooter time and time again can get a bit expensive, and this is a cost-effective way to keep the investments down while also giving yourself and your viewers a behind-the-scenes glimpse of what it's like to work with you. Also, you can go back and review the footage to see what you did right and what you could have done differently or perhaps even better. And finally, taking you all along the journey with me will definitely give me and you added value for our respective YouTube channels. Now, it's not everything peaches and cream. As with most things in life, there are drawbacks. The first of which is that you'll have to rig out your camera and inevitably add some weight to what could already be heavy for you. I don't know exactly how heavy this added setup is, but it's undoubtedly going to make your rig heavier sooner. It's worth mentioning that if you're dealing with on-camera flash, the unit is going to take at least one third of the screen on the GoPro. If you're not shooting with on-camera flash or with a trigger, then this isn't going to be a problem. Now, the only other bump on the road I've encountered is that no matter how much you offset the L bracket to the right, you're always going to hit the GoPro with your forehead when looking through the viewfinder in portrait mode. I've since then caught myself shooting through the back LCD quite a bit during the birthday party I shot the other day. I suppose I'm being nitpicky, but at the end of the day, I think it pales in comparison to the vast amount of benefits you'll have attaching this camera to your system. So there you have it. That's the bottom line when it comes to rigging your camera out for some BTS. Now, let me ask you this. Is this something you already own? Will you now consider getting it for your personal use? Let me know in the comments if you got any more questions about this setup and I will happily get to them. Also stay tuned for my comprehensive review of this RF100 macro coming up in my next video. It's gonna do it for me. I hope you got a little value out of this video and if you did, Stick that thumb, you know where. And if you want to see more videos like this one, then stick around because I'd love to have you. Feel free to leave a video suggestion in the comments on the way out because this is a YouTube channel I want you guys to control. My name is Francis and I will see you in the next one.